We continue our series, Following Jesus, and this morning we're looking at the greatest love. We are in Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 28. On one occasion, an expert in law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. You've answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts and minds this morning. Well, as I said, we're looking at the greatest love. I heard this story that I love about this 92-year-old man who went to the doctors to get a checkup. And a few days later, the doctor saw him in the park walking around with this young, beautiful woman by his side. And he seemed as happy as he could be. And The doctor said, wow, you seem to be feeling a lot better, aren't you? And the man replied, sure, I'm just following your orders. You said, get a hot mama and be cheerful. The doctor said, that's not what I said. I said, you've got a heart murmur, be careful. Well, you know, passion makes all the difference in our hearts and our lives. I want to ask you this morning, what are you passionate about? What are you really passionate about in your life? What gives you energy and a source of life and living? You know, a lot of us, as we're in this uh, situation with COVID-19, are doing sort of a a life reset, I think. I mean, there's those of us who are staying at home most of the time, except for essential kinds of things. And so we're spending a lot more time with family. Maybe our lives have slowed down some, and we're beginning to wonder to ourselves, perhaps, and maybe even find the answers to what are the most important things in life and thinking we need to maybe hit the reset button and what it means to go back to those foundational things. I think there's other folks who are on the front line, and they may be serving those who are in the hospital. Uh, Those might be our EMT responders and other folks who are really on the front lines, and their life is, in some sense, more hurried. But I think they also catch a glimpse of what the most important things in life are all about. And so I think they're hitting the reset button, too. And as we all sort of hit the reset buttons in our life and think about what it's going to be like and sort of the new normal of our lives and what our lives should be based on, I think this is a great verse to look at. Because in some sense, I think this man who comes to Jesus is wondering if he should hit the reset button in his life and what his life should be all about. And so I invite us to walk back into that story this morning. We're told this uh, man was an attorney, an expert in the law. And so he comes to Jesus and says, how can I inherit life, internal life? What's the most important thing in life? And Jesus sort of turns the question in on him and asks him how he sees the law and life. Now, we are to believe probably this young man has been listening to Jesus' teaching, but also knew that the most important thing according to Hebrew scriptures found in Deuteronomy chapter 6 is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. And so he answers exactly that way. He said, it's to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, you've answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. Now, there's a little edge to that question, isn't there? Because it isn't just knowing the right answer it's really applying it to our hearts and lives, and I think that's the reset button. And, and so as we look at this this morning and realize that, first of all, this young man probably listened to some of the teachings of Jesus because of the way he answered that, uh, not only with that first part, but also love your neighbor as yourself. But if you go back and look at Hebrew scriptures and Hebrew culture this time, the most important prayer to Hebrew folks, probably the first prayer that Jesus ever prayed himself, what is called the Shema, and it still is today, which is from Deuteronomy chapter 6, 1 and following, and that's just in Hebrew how it starts out. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And it's beautiful. And Jesus is saying this is the foundational truth to all of life. And so when you think about it this morning, that's the, that's the target, the thing that we aim for. In fact, in archery, Uh, In this time, if you miss the bullseye, it was called sin. And so that's where we get the term sin from, is missing the bullseye. And so Jesus is saying, this is the center. This is what we're aiming for in life. 
And, and so to think about that and just sort of break it down as we think about our own lives being in reset mode, love the Lord your God with all your heart. That word love that Jesus is using is the term agape that we hear so much. It's God kind of love that comes from God and is the foundation for all of life that God gives us. And so love, this agape love, the Lord with all of your heart. Now heart, many of us know, of course, that if you go to the doctor, they check our heart or what have you. And it pumps the blood through our body. But there's also a sense in which heart has always been used as the center of our emotional life and sometimes the sense of our own life. So if someone says uh, something about themselves, they usually point to their heart, don't they? It's the center of our emotional life. And so Jesus is saying, love God with all of your heart. Don't just go through the motion, but love God with all of your heart, with your emotions. Don't just go through the motions in life. Now, Uh, We all know folks who maybe are excellent at music, but maybe it's mechanical and they don't have the passion, right? And so when we look at that, uh, we realize that Jesus said you need to have the the passion to it. And we also know folks, if you see folks in sports many times, they're very talented in sports, but they don't have the passion. And so to love God with all of our heart, with all of our passions, and then to love God with all of our soul. And soul, when we think about it, is that eternal part of us. And so in the Hebrew, it was ruach or nephesh, and, and the Greek had that same kind of overtone, the eternal part of us. Of course, all of us are eternal in some sense. We're all holistic, but sometimes when you break things down, it helps us to realize all the facets of our life. And so you think for a moment about in Genesis, and you have the imagery of how God formed people from uh, the dust and then breathed life into it. And you have that word breath, which is that word for soul. And then you think of uh, Jesus when he was resurrected. And he came into the upper room, and he, we're told he breathed on the disciples and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. It's the same kind of breath, that power of God, the breath of God. And so that eternal part of us, to love God with that. And then to love God with all of our mind. Now, uh, for many people, when we think about mind, obviously we think about the mental process. We can control that sometimes better than we can our emotions. But I think part of what it means is to is to focus and to think for a moment uh, about your goals and your focus in life and how much that means about how you live out your life. And sometimes we have trouble with our focus, and I'm reminded of a time when my daughter and I went to uh, visit one of our family members who was a Navy SEAL, and he was going to sniper school with the SEALs, and so they had a family day. And so we got to go to the SEAL training center, and we got to hear about how they shot, and we got to see them do that. And then we were trained by the SEALs to you know, uh, shoot these rifles, and we had targets at 500 yards, 800 yards, and then a mile, different rifles, a 272, a 350 caliber rifle. And they taught us how to, how to focus. Now, we couldn't focus at their level, but they coached us on exactly how to do that, and we watched them, and it was amazing what they could do is they just shut everything else out and focused on that one thing, and so they were able to hit a target at a mile or further. And we learned some truths in our own life, I think, that day too. So in our life, what do we focus on? What do we take our our mental capacity and focus on the most important thing in life? And Jesus is saying your emotions, your spirit, and also your mental focus. Now, for my own life, some of you know that one of the things that I, I carry in my car a lot and then I try to have on my person when I, when I preach is this little sort of a medallion or keepsake. And it's really not very expensive, but it's something that means a lot to me. And on the one side, it has a picture of the risen Lord, and then it has a little cross on it. But on the inside here, it has this scripture verse, love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. And when I have that in my pocket and I preach, I always try to remember that that's the center of what we're doing. That's the bullseye. That's the target. That's what we need to focus on with our mind, but also our whole life. And then Jesus said, with all your strength. Now, strength here, uh, in the original Hebrew, strength actually literally is very, very. In other words, with all of your being, with all of your might, put everything you've got into it. And I think that makes all the difference to uh, focus with everything we have. Love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, and with all of our strength. And when we do that, that makes 
all the difference in all of our life. And then it says, and love your neighbor as yourself. And so there's sort of this cross-shaped relationship that I love to think about. And the vertical dimension of the cross is our love for God and God's love for us. And then our vertical or horizontal dimension, which is our love for our neighbor. And I think it's so important because if we don't have the vertical, we can't have the horizontal. But notice what's implicit here is that we do love ourselves. And for many of us, that's very difficult. I mean, think about it for a moment. There's so many folks that we know, or maybe we ourselves have had some wounds um, from a parent, maybe, that did something that just hurt us in the wrong way. Or sometimes we, we think of peers growing up in school, and sometimes maybe they said hurtful things. Or maybe we think even of teachers who said something and or maybe unknowingly sort of wounded our pride and our soul. And maybe there's just shortcomings in our life and brokenness. And so when we think about ourselves, sometimes our image isn't all that it could be. But when we realize that God loved us enough to send Christ to come and to offer his life to give us grace and healing and forgiveness, then because of that love, we can love ourselves. 1 John 4.19 says, We love because he first loved us. That gives us the power to love ourselves and then to love our neighbor. We can't just stay there now. In the following weeks, we're going to break apart what neighbor means in different dimensions, but realize this, that we're compelled to not only love ourselves, but to love our neighbors. That includes our families, those that are closest to us, and then our, our neighbors, those that are close, but even to stretch beyond that and to love those who are not quite like ourselves. As I said, we're going to kind of break that apart in the weeks ahead as we take this journey with Jesus in this metaphor and in the parable that follows. But to pause this morning and to think about where we are as we reset our lives. What is the, the target of our life? Moses gave this preface to the Ten Commandments, knowing that the commandments were just a list of what we should and should not do. But the most important thing was the heart of the matter, and to live that out of the, as a principle was to love God, and that empowered us to do all the rest. Well, things haven't changed, and Jesus underscores that it's exactly this that's true. And so as we reset our lives, I challenge us to love God with all our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. I'm going to close with a couple of thoughts, which is the first is that I love the ancient tradition of the Greek Olympics. And so they had the marathon that was really the highlight of the event and, of course, still is today in many respects. And so you see these runners giving everything they have for, you know, 26-plus miles, and it's just amazing. And, of course, people cheering the first person across the line. But in ancient Greek culture, in the original Olympics, it wasn't just the first person to cross the finish line that won the race. It was the first person to cross the finish line with their torch lit. You see, they had to run the entire race with a lit torch, and that's the tradition that we have today of uh, the torch that's lit circling the globe and then lighting the original uh, ceremonies and then being taken from there at the closing ceremonies. And so they had to run the entire race with their torch lit and cross the finish line with it lit. I think that's a symbol in our lives, too, that we run a race, but we need to have our torch lit, which I think is a symbol for our love for God and our neighbor. That's the most important thing. And if we cross the finish line that way, then we run the most important race in life. And the final story I have, which I think illustrates this point beautifully, is the story of this rabbi in the second century. And we're told that he was walking from the village to his home, which was a ways in the countryside. And as he walked along the way, he was praying this Shema. The Lord our God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And he kept repeating it over and over. In fact, he prayed it so earnestly that he missed the turn that went to his house and kept walking and walking as he said this prayer. And all of a sudden he came upon a Roman encampment with a Roman centurion guarding it. And the Roman guard said, halt, who are you and why are you here? And the rabbi said, what? And the Roman soldier said, who are you and why are you here? And the rabbi thought for a moment and said, how much do they pay you a day to do this job? 
And the Roman soldier was not amused by that. And so he said, who are you and why are you here? And the rabbi said, I I mean no harm, but really, how much do they pay you a day? The Roman soldier realized this rabbi was elderly and meant no harm. And so the Roman soldier replied, two drachma a day. And so the rabbi said, I will gladly double whatever they pay you if you will stand at the door of my home every day when I'm leaving and when I'm coming home and ask those same two questions. Who are you and why are you here? You see, because I think just like the rabbi, you and I need to be reminded who are we and why are we here? And I think the answer, the center of the target, the goal is what Jesus answered in this this morning. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. And we can only do it through God's love. We join me in prayer. Lord, as we think about the center of our hearts and lives this morning, sometimes we've gotten off track. But now, in this moment, it's a good time to reset our lives for going forward. And as we reset our lives, Lord, help us to have the foundation in our hearts and lives that you would have us to have, to love you with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.